Ooh, wow. What are you ooh wowing the, about? Oh, there's there's one uh, receiver that I really like. I didn't even know he's still available. Uh, Ruben Randall. I love Ruben Randall this year. Uh oh. Yeah. Explain your Ruben Randall. Oh, life. but oh, you, of course you picked me for me. Okay, no, uh, I'm, I'm not going to take him. I'm I'm not as high on Ruben Randall as you are. I, I love Ruben. I don't know why it's uh, it's ridiculous. Um, so well, uh, Odell Beckham. I mean, he he's going to get double and triple team the entire year, and you don't know how he's going to respond with that. I mean, yeah, he's one of the most talented guys out there, and uh, he's probably going to beat these double and triple teams more often than not because he's a one of a kind talent. But Ruben Randall's a legitimate red zone uh, target. He, he's a guy that's like six three. That uh, it had a very low number of touchdowns last year, I believe. I think he had like two or three, he and three. Uh, he had a low catch rate. He had three, yeah. And uh, he's a guy that should every year, he legitimately should get you seven, eight, nine touchdowns. I mean, he's a guy that I think is going to be uh, at least a wide receiver three, and he, he could be as high as a wide receiver one. But most, I'm thinking he's going to be about a wide receiver two. Um, it with all Cruz depends on slot. how much Cruz plays, I think. Yeah, exactly. I think Cruz is going to be an, only a slot guy, I'm thinking. I think Cruz is not good anymore. <laughs> His injury was really bad. Uh, I think he's in a contract year, so so the Giants are not going to re-sign him. I think Randall has youth on his side. He's got some speed. He's got some hops. And he's got Eli Manning. And uh, I don't know, that offense I think is going to be legit this year, especially with Shane Vereen, too. I think uh, that offense could be really exciting to watch. And, yeah. and, and Randall will just be a, a benefit of uh, Odell Beckham getting those double and triple teams. So he should be able to win that one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside for plenty of touchdowns this year. That being said, I am guarantee somebody's going to take him right before I... Right, right before you pick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the history of people coming back from uh, that injury that Cruz had are... The history is not good. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, it looked bad, man. What was oh, it? It was dude. a hip dislocation or something? No, or... it's like kneecap came off. Kneeca oh, oh, yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> Yowzers. Uh, so, man, I'm looking at the quarterbacks who are still available, and it is, it's just dumb. Like, Phillip Rivers, Colin yeah. Kaepernick, Carson Palmer, Teddy Bridgewater, Jay Cutler. Like, these guys are legitimate NFL starters. Uh, again, they should matter in fantasy, and they do not in a one quarterback right. league, even with 12 teams. Now, if you're playing in. 14 or 16 team leagues then yeah i mean you, it's, it's a lot harder to play two quarterback although i could make the argument for super flex i will not um anyway <laughs> I, i'm not taking a quarterback because again there's so many good ones left that even if i want to take a backup with so one of these last two spots which i don't uh you know i could wait another round uh, i'm gonna take brian quick uh nice I was po looking at possibly the number one receiver for the uh the rams um I'm not super convinced that Foles is the type of quarterback who can elevate him to, you know, weekly startable status. But I, I mean, again, at this point, you're throwing darts and you're, you're going to kind of see what sticks. Yeah. Quick was uh, really good last year, and that was with some bad quarterback play. Foles isn't anything special, but he's going to be an upgrade of, uh, of Austin and all those guys they had last year. So um, I don't know. Quick is another guy. Six three, has he's fast, you know, and uh, he, I don't know. I think um, Bowles will be kind of like an Andy Dalton, Alex Smith type. Uh, he'll be a game manager, especially in that offense. He's probably a little bit more talented, honestly, than uh, Andy Dalton um, because he's put up good stats uh, before. Yeah, I got Randall. You but, did it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that. S sidebar: <laughs> I drafted Ruben Randall. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't be that excited about Ruben Randall, <laughs> but um. I like so, Terrence Williams a lot this year, too. Yeah, I like Williams as well. I, again, I don't think the Cowboys are going to run quite as frequently as they did last season, just based upon the fact that DeMarco Murray is gone. I, I think this is a big year for Romo, and, and if I think that, then I have to you know, right. ex expect <laughs> you know someone other than Dez to perform well. So I do like Terrence yeah. Williams. I think that Witten is underrated a little bit, too, although was, he's, the, the perfect, he's the perfect player to like draft and then start for six weeks and then trade because... He almost yeah. always wears down over the course of the season. Right. Like Martellus Bennett, too. I think he's always good at the beginning of the year, too. Um, I, I platoon, in one of my MFL 10s uh, the other day, I platoon, my two uh, tight end platoons were uh, Witten and Vernon Davis. And I got both those guys like in the 13th round on. So, And I'm pretty happy with those two veterans. I think uh, both those guys, the platoon, should, be, should turn into a top 10 tight end. But, VD uh, yeah. is so underrated this year. I, yeah. It, it makes me kind of upset. Right, I like their offensive coordinator, um, Jeep, <laughs> Jeep Christ, or what Jeep. his name is. <laughs> um, I, I think, well, he's a little bit more innovative than the Roman, the guy they had before, and I think uh, he's going to really open up the offense a lot more. 
and uh, they're not going to rely on ground and pound because they're not going to have the offense. Uh, they're not going to have the lead in a lot of these games. So because yeah, so I, I, I hope you're right. As a Niner fan, I hope you're right. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you're coming up here after a few auto picks. At what point yeah. do you would you consider a defense now, or are you just you always going to wait until the last two rounds to take your defense and kicker? I almost always wait the last few rounds. I, I like uh, like the Cowboys as like a sleeper defense later on. Like the Jets, sometimes they're not taken. Um, I almost always definitely in drafts like this, I'll take a, a defense second to last pick and then kick it last. I think. Uh, yeah, I don't think even if you take uh, Seattle like like a few rounds before, there's no there's no guarantee that Seattle is going to be a top five defense. Even you yeah, know what I mean no, the so. correlation from year to year doesn't exist for the most part. Right. Who who are you taking here if you're not taking? I'm a defense? taking exactly. I'm looking at uh, since Tyler Eifert's my only tight end and he's a little shaky. I might just take another uh, tight end. I see Walker who has a high ceiling. Uh, I might go with uh, well, what name is it right well, there? ASJ. ASJ. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. I think ASJ. That's another lottery ticket with Tyler Eifert. I think uh, both those guys have such high upsides that uh, one of them should uh, come around and uh, do good. I mean, ASJ is like a six, seven, or six, eight guy. He's got a upgraded quarterback, so he's supposed to be uncoverable in practice. So, <laughs> <laughs> damn coach speak. Narratives. <laughs> yeah. Who are you I, taking? I, I don't know. Um... I'm not taking a backup quarterback. I'm, I might take a backup tight end, but at this point, it's almost like you might as well let the the waiver wire be your bench with quarterbacks and tight end. Like, there's no sense in carrying them until you actually need to pick one up to replace your starter. Because uh, I don't think I'm gonna need to stream tight ends with Matthews or quarterbacks with Tannehill. Uh, I, I'm hoping that's not the case. So I'm looking at the running backs who are available. No one's really jumping out at me. Uh, your boy Reggie Bush is the top ranked oh, guy man. here at, at at ESPN. Um, <laughs> I, I actually don't think there's any value really to any of these running backs over, say, another wide receiver uh, or a tight end. So I might I might take a backup tight end just because, well, I don't know. Guys guys I like, um, Doug Baldwin, I think perennially underrated. Uh, again, I, I don't really want another Anquan Bolden type, just like a steady producer. Uh, I think there's more upside with a guy like Marvin Jones for the same reasons you like Eifert. Oh, yeah. uh, Devin Funchess in Carolina. Uh, I think Britt has upside, although I just took quick, so I wouldn't select him in this particular <laughs> case. Uh, Stevie Johnson, uh, kind of inheriting that Eddie Royal yeah. role in San Diego could be a value. Uh, Alan Hearns, I like Hearns. Uh, I'm kind of just yeah. going down the rankings. Um, I like Steve Johnson a lot, especially this late. I didn't even know he was there. Yeah, I mean, and th- I do think there's value to these tight ends too, though. Walker, Vernon Davis, uh, Kyle Rudolph, those are the guys I'd probably have, you know, at the top of my list at this point. But but again, I think I think I can let those guys be my bench. I, I would consider a defense here, if only because there are so many auto drafters coming up that you know I might get Stevie Johnson back. Uh, right. He's not ranked high enough, so oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll use this. Uh, to highlight the Dolphins defense who who are the top ranked ESPN defense at this point, but uh, they have a nice opening schedule. They have a, they're going to be better this year than they were last year. And with Sue, who cares their defense? I mean, I'll probably drop them in a week anyway for (laughs) a good good matchup for some other team. The the Dolphins are one defense that I've been getting a lot of my teams too. actually. I I like them a lot uh, this year. The whole team, I think, I think the Dolphins have a legitimate chance to actually win the division. I just want to see any team but the Patriots yeah. win that damn anybody, division. But, anybody but Belichick. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I, I think there's something to be said about this part of draft strategy as well, especially if you're playing in public leagues or just online drafts where maybe somebody drops out because they need to, you know, go to bed or, you know, yeah. go go be spend time with their children. Uh, oh. there, there are a lot of excuses that people come up with to not, you know, finish or even attend their fantasy drafts in the first place. And if that's happening, like, you can exploit that. Uh, in these later rounds when, when there's so many auto drafters that, that I know that Stevie Johnson is just going to make it back to me right here for yeah, my, you go. <laughs> my second to last pick. Uh, and of Great course, pick. ESPN now tells me I need to draft a kicker, which is, again, just the stupidest nonsense I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. But yeah, the whole time you're talking about receivers and running backs, I couldn't even look at them because they're like, you must have to, yeah. you have to take a defense. Don't even think about it, Jeff. <laughs> Damn you. How dare you. It's not how you play fantasy. All right, well, what what defense are you targeting here? All right, a defense. Uh, let's see, the top guys they got the Lions, Vikings, Patriots, Packers. 
Uh, it's a couple uh, picks until I'm up. Uh, I like uh, generally I like defenses uh, that actually uh, have a high uh, potential for turnovers, and that usually is defenses with good offenses. So um, I'll take uh, the Packers if they fall to me. Um, yeah, I like uh, any team that's always winning always uh, will get more turnovers than uh, an average team. I don't like the Lions as much this year. They lost fairly. They lost Sue. My turn. All right, I'll take Green Bay. But uh, yeah, generally I think. Uh, yeah, I think, and like like you said, I'll probably just be cutting them, you know, in a couple weeks. I think the Packers actually have a tough top, uh, schedule to begin the year, so maybe that was a bad pick. Oh, yeah. you know, they play uh, Cutler. They play Cutler week one, so I'll, I'll start in week one at least. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. And then yeah. I, I know they play a C- Seattle week two, which will be the great game of the year pretty much. I, I awesome. think week one matchup probably factors into my defensive choice more than anything else. And then, like, the second largest factor is, like, weeks two through four matchups like yeah i'd really defenses all year yeah and and not that i don't believe there's value to having a good defense especially in like a deeper league but in something like this with 12 teams where you're gonna have good defenses available on the waiver wire uh or usable maybe not good there's there's no real point in taking anybody but someone with a good matchup in my opinion but uh cutler is one of those so i I think he'll be fine yeah (laughs) seriously it's always uh, always cool to have somebody like Cutler in the league that just doesn't give a crap about uh, interceptions. Streaming against uh, Buffalo will probably be pretty trendy this year. <laughs> yeah. So so what do you think about this roster you put together here? You got Luck, Miller, okay. Yeldon, uh, Thomas, and Cooks at wide receiver. Yeah. I, I love your tight end combo here in Eifert and Safarian Jenkins. Like yeah. One of those guys is probably going to hit, and you only really need one of them to hit, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's a fair amount of downside with uh, Eifert, but there, um, there's just not an upside with uh, ASJ. So I, I like my tight ends a lot, especially uh, waiting on tight end. Even though I wasn't expecting to wait on tight end, I thought I was going to get Gronk because he's ranked, I think, 20, and uh, I was picking number eight. But the guy number seven overall took him. So uh, but, I, had, but uh, I think what you've done here is, is a perfect illustration yeah. of why Gronk I – don't, I don't think he deserves to be in the first round. I think in the second round you exactly. could talk me into it, but – uh, as as the seventh or eighth overall, uh, no thanks. Give me one of the one of the wideouts. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm really happy having Demarius as uh, instead of Gronk. I mean, Demarius is gonna outscore Gronk most likely, you know. But uh, the reason why I wanted Gronk is because of pos- position scarcity. But at the same time, if you can get someone like Eifer and ASJ, who uh, one of those guys should be a top ten guy, I'm pretty happy about that. All right, let me take a kicker. Sure, I'll take Crosby. I don't care. Don't take the Pittsburgh guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I heard he, he's hurt. So, is, <laughs> but, um, is, is Cody Parkey available? MVP Parkey, of fantasy football? Parkey brothers? No, <laughs> I wouldn't take Parkey. I, I think uh, Philly hates. There's one kicker I'm actually avoiding. I think Philly's going to go for a two point conversions a lot. Oh, I think man. they're going to keep Tebow just because the 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 extra point's going to be what like a 36 yard field goal or something <laughs> so is that rule official i actually was not aware of it was where it they was. settled on that i'm pretty sure it is this year uh, i'm not 100% positive but like 80% positive that the uh, extra point will uh, legitimately be like a 30 something yard field goal so actually going for two is the better thing to do in the long run it's uh you get positive expected value Man. by going for two all you have to do is have a higher than 50% success rate and someone like Philly, I think uh, that team would probably do something like that. It's going to really screw with uh, uh, these Vegas um, uh, numbers too, with the minus threes and the minus two and a half and fours. <laughs> Man, that, yeah, that could be potential chaos in Las Vegas. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah. Everyone's already talking about it, so <laughs> should be fun, especially with Philly. Philly's going to be covering or not covering by one point quite a bit this year. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm in for any rule that makes people go for it more than kick pats that that seems like a good scenario for the nfl right yeah it, it'll make it more fun I, I i like it i think uh pats are so so stupid i mean it's just uh, so boring to watch a pat so it will be fun to see a team actually try to go for it more often than not i could see someone like philly actually going for it every single time because it's supposed to be the better thing to do so uh should be fun <laughs> this gentleman picking before me is using his entire clock <laughs> Take for, your kicker. for his rounds. No, he already has a kicker, so he's taking oh, anything okay. else. He probably will just take a second kicker yeah, after all this, just to spite me. Oh no, he who did he take? He took a mod Bradshaw. Which <laughs> wait, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> <laughs> it's not 2007 anymore, dude. Oh man, <laughs> what's in this beer that I've been drinking? Did he really just select Ahmad Bradshaw? Um, <laughs> we'll, 
What kind of beer are you drinking? Uh, this is a great white, <laughs> nothing fancy. I still owe you a blue moon for the Clippers, yeah. Clippers defeating the Spurs in the yeah, 2014 the NBA playoffs. I could have just picked them at plus 400, and instead I was like, no, I got that beer writing on, on the damn uh, series. That beer is <laughs> not going to taste as good as uh, however much money you would have won. <laughs> I, I, right, seriously. Could have bought I a had, lot of blue moons for that. But, um, before the season started, I took them at, I think, even money, so I was pretty happy. I didn't want to bet more because they were down like three to two or three to one <laughs> and they still won so uh how do you like your team i, I like i like this team a lot actually um I, i'm not super excited about my running backs uh, again i think spiller was a bit of a reach uh and and blunt and martin both have their downsides uh, but with that said my wide receivers are really good uh and i like all the kind of the rest of the team like Tannehill, jordan cameron um you know, Josh Brown, a kicker. I mean, you got to be excited about your kicker pick, right? Oh, yeah, man. Josh Brown. Giants, man. <laughs> I, I'm in for any kicker who's on an offense that is in line to score a lot of points. I mean, it's the, the argument exactly. for Parkey. It's the ar- argument for... Uh, That's why like I, I, I took Crosby without even thinking of it. Yeah, it's... it's Packers, sure. Yep, <laughs> yep. And I do think uh, that the Giants are one of those teams this year uh, who at least should move the ball enough to get into field goal range, even if they don't necessarily convert all those into touchdowns. Um, exactly. And I think those are the types of kickers you want to target. Steve Johnson and Brian Quick were really good values at the very end of your draft. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I'm, and seeing those makes me wish that I had spent that Jordan Matthews pick or the Mike Evans pick on a running back, possibly. Oh. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I think I, I like the way this team shaped up. I, I do think there, it's easier to find running back value off the waiver wire than wide receiver value, uh, at least from a week to week production standpoint. But, I'll, I'll trade you James. I'll tra- trade you James White for uh, wait after Legarrette Blunt goes down. <laughs> there you go. See, you're already That's, thinking ahead. There you go. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Well, uh, we've we've gone on for almost yeah. almost two hours here. I, I yeah. think we should wrap it up. Uh, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Are you going to be writing at the Fake Football this year? Yes. Yeah. Starting week one, I'll have a weekly article. Vegas uh, preview a again. Va- a Vegas preview, most likely. Yep. <laughs> Hell yeah! Very exciting. All right, we'll look forward to that. Uh, you can catch me on the Fake Football with these draft videos. Uh, And I've got a big 2QB uh, draft strategy article coming up very soon. Uh, It might be posted before this video gets edited. In fact, it's entirely possible. Uh, But anyway, thank you all for watching. And uh, definitely check out all the content at the Fig Football. we got a lot of awesome writers doing a bunch of really cool stuff. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Adios. Peace out.